Assalamu alaikum everyone. The topic of this video is the reconstruction of the Kaaba, which happened five years before the beginning of the divine revelation. So here is the story. The people in Mecca had decided to renovate the Kaaba because the inside of the Kaaba was damaged because of several floods in Mecca and the walls of the Kaaba were cracked. Also they wanted to add a roof to it because it did not have a roof. On the other side, the Meccans heard that there was a shipwreck on the shores of Jeddah and this ship was carrying constructing materials. They went to the wreckage and bought the construction materials in the ship. They decided to demolish the Kaaba first and then rebuild it together. And each tribe wanted to be involved in this honorable job. For that reason, the tribes were divided into four groups and each group was given to renovate a certain wall. Then the groups began to work. So the people in Mecca had rebuilt the walls of the Kaaba and it became stronger than before. Then it was the time to place inside Hajar al Aswad, the black stone, which was considered very sacred by people. So, why is sacred? According to Islamic narrations, when Prophet Ibrahim completed the building of the Kaaba, he needed a stone as a beginning point for the pilgrims when they circumambulate the Kaaba. He assigned his son Ismail to bring a stone for that purpose. While Ismail was looking for a stone, Angel Jibril brought that stone from the Mount Abu Kubays, which is a small mountain close to the Kaaba, to Prophet Ibrahim to place in the Kaaba. More importantly, that stone is believed to be sent from heaven by Allah when Adam was sent to the earth from heaven. So it was believed that the stone was preserved at the Mount Abu Kubays until Prophet Ibrahim needed it when he built the Kaaba. Prophet Muhammad said that when this stone came down from paradise, it was wider than milk. However, the sins and mistakes of mankind turned it black. Some other narration says that it has turned black over the years because of the touching of the polities and the fires. As a result, because of the sacredness of this black stone, each tribe wanted to place it back into the Kaaba by themselves. And they began arguing with each other on this issue. Then the eldest man of them had an idea. He said that they should appoint a judge among them and end this dispute. He said, let the first man who enters the door of the Kaaba be that judge for you and let him solve your problem and do what he says. They said, okay, we'll obey his judgment. Then they waited for the first person to enter through the doors. After a silent wait, the first person entering through the doors of the Kaaba was Muhammad, peace be upon him. They all said, look, Al Amin, the trustworthy, will agree on his judgment. People in Mecca would call Muhammad Al Amin, the trustworthy, because he was known as the most reliable person in the community. Prophet Muhammad already got their trust, so they were happy when they saw him because they had no doubt that he would be fair in his judgment. So Prophet Muhammad asked them what was going on and the people explained him what they were dealing with. To solve the conflict, Prophet Muhammad asked them to bring a big piece of cloth. They brought the cloth and he laid the cloth on the ground and carried the black stone with his own hands and placed it on the cloth. He said, 
Each representative of the four groups who built one side of the Kaaba should come forward. When they came forward, he said, each of you hold the side of the cloth on behalf of his tribe and then lift it up all together. They did what he said and they brought the stone to the level of its original place in the Kaaba. Then Prophet Muhammad took it with his hands and put it in its place. So the problem was solved without any conflict. No one could say anything against it because each tribe had participated in the work with their representatives. If we look at this incident from a different point of view, I think we can see the divine will here. We may say that probably Allah wanted him to place that sacred stone like he wanted his prophets Adam and Ibrahim to build the Kaaba. Also, maybe Allah wanted the Meccans to confirm Muhammad's right decision and fairness before he announced his prophethood. Only God knows. Let's talk a little bit about his trustworthiness. As Allah chose Muhammad, peace be upon him, as his messenger to all humanity, he should be Al-Amin, the trustworthy, because he would contact the divine and deliver his messages to the people. So there should not be any lie in this divine duty. The fact is that everyone in his community agreed upon his honesty. No one had ever heard him lie because he never lied, nor cheated, nor broke his word. He was called the truthful even by his worst enemies like Abu Jehil or Utbe. These people would say, if you have to travel and need someone to look after your wife, entrust her to Muhammad without hesitation, for he will not even glance at her face. If you want to entrust your wealth for protection, entrust it to this honest man, for he will never touch it. Therefore, when Prophet Muhammad became God's messenger, Meccans could not accuse him of lying because they knew him very well since his childhood as he grew up among them. For this reason, the unbelievers could only accuse him of being possessed or being a poet, a magician or so. One day, a man asked Abu Jahil, one of the worst enemies of the Prophet, if he believed in Muhammad or not. Abu Jahil answered, I know that he is truly a prophet. Nevertheless, we compete with the Beni Hashim in everything. Beni Hashim means the sons of Hashim, which is the clan of Prophet Muhammad. He said, they have been boasting of providing food and water to the pilgrims. Now, if they begin to boast of having a prophet, I won't be able to endure it at all. This is only one example of why some people did not accept Islam, although they confessed that he was telling the truth. Also, when some non-Muslims came to visit Prophet Muhammad for the first time, after they looked at his face and listened to his speech, they would say, such a face cannot lie, and then they would declare their belief in him. If we conclude, Prophet Muhammad was testified by all men and women of his community to be the most reliable and trustworthy person on earth. Now we are ending the history of the early life of Prophet Muhammad here. Peace be upon him. I hope you enjoyed the videos. Thank you for watching and stay in peace.